Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Showcast. My name is Matt Makuchi, and this is a series of candid conversations from film festivals and film markets everywhere, presented by The Film Verdict. On this episode, I bring you a treat from the 2023 Berlinale, which presented a special screening of Order from 1980 by Sorab Shahid Sales. An innovator of Iranian cinema, Sales was also part of a diaspora of film professionals working during the fabled New German Cinema movement of the 1970s and 1980s. Yet despite being a contemporary to such names as Wenders, Herzog and Fassbinder, he remains relatively unknown to this day. And it is thanks to the works of such scholars as Vivian Buchhorn that his memory is kept alive and once again celebrated today. Buchhorn founded the Shahid Sales Archive with this specific purpose, via initiatives of film preservation, restoration, exhibition, education and much more. I spoke with her ahead of the special screening that would mark the return of Sales to the forum section of the Berlinale. So fire up an audio teeny and listen to the audio waves as they fly through the air. This is the Showcast. Hi Vivian, how's it going? Welcome to the Showcast. Hello Matt. It's a pleasure to talk with you. You are the first interview that I'm recording at the Berlinale 2023, uh, my first edition of the Berlinale in a while, actually. So it's pretty special. I could not be happier because one of the things that I really love to talk about is uh, retrospectives. It's the cinema of the past, the cinema that's rediscovered. And you do a lot uh, with that, especially we're going to be focusing in, uh, on one filmmaker in particular, right? Yeah, um, we will talk a bit about Surab Shahid Sales and the Shahid Sales archive that we found 2021 and um, talk about the new film restorations that we're working on at the moment. And before we do that, uh, you uh, mentioned that we should talk about where we're conduct conducting this interview because we are right now at the Cinema Arsenal, uh, which is uh, named after the great Soviet film But in terms of Salas too, uh, there's a connection there, right? Yeah, I mean, the connection is to um, Arsenal um, at, at first because um, it's the cinema that Erika and Ulrich Gregor um, found and that they also um, had when they found the um, forum section of Berlinale, um, starting off at first as an independent section and then being part of the festival. And it was a section where Sales um, films were um, always screened, like most of them. And um, when he started with his two feature length films, um, his two first um, Iranian um, productions, Still Life and A Simple Event, um, he was part of the Berlinale program in 1974 with one film in the competition and one film in the same year at the Forum. And from day one on, Erika and Ulrich Gregor were um, always supporting Sales' works and um, yeah, had a special relation to him. And we are here now, um, but also Sales comes back, so to say, because on Tuesday, the 21st of February, um, his film Order will be screened in exactly that cinema arsenal again. It sounds really special. Uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to record this interview for is because I myself am not too familiar with the works of Salis. And I think it's it's great to kind of share and talk about this forget, forgotten filmmaker, somewhat forgotten filmmaker, who really should be known more. I mean, to people who are not familiar with him, uh, how would you describe his work and his legacy? Who is Shahib Salis? Well, he was a filmmaker and um, he um, was born in um, Iran in 1944 and he died in 1998 in um, Chicago in America. And um, yeah, I mean, who is he? He's a, um, to start off, he, is a, he was a filmmaker um, and an artist, um, always, so to say, seeking for a place in a geographical way, but also um, in a political way, a place for his art, a place for his films and the messages, um, the characters he wanted to deliver to society with his films. So um, when he, um, I mean, he from Iran, he, he also had some um, 
stops in Paris and Vienna where he studied film making and took some classes there. Um, was also there because of personal reasons, came back again to um, uh, Tehran and left Tehran then in 1975. Also uh, because of political reasons, because um, there was also um, a lot, a lot of censorship and pressure behind the Shah regime. So um, he had to uh, leave the country, and he left it um, after his um, what I said in the beginning after his success with winning a silver bear at the Berlinale and having two films here in Berlin in 1974. He came to Berlin in 1975, shot his first um, German production with the Provobus here um, in Berlin that was um, far from home. And, and then his journey went on in uh, West Germany with um, many more um, German productions to follow. But also he uh, shooted films, for example, in Kabul and he shot films in the Czech Republic. And um, then he left uh, West Germany um, in the 90s to uh, go to Chicago. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, from just the biographical details of his life, it sounds like he was a, a, what I like to define, a renegade director, traveled to different places, worked in different places as well, tried to find a spot for his own art. But if you were to pick out key characteristics of his cinema, what would you say they are? Yeah, maybe also to the um, idea of uh, of a filmmaker that had to migrate also to um, follow up his ideas. I mean, it's it was always... Um, the one uh, geographical fact that he had to leave countries again, but it was always also a fact that um, he had to find support for his films. So he was always struggling, st struggling really hard, especially in the German film funding system in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and beginning of the 90s to get funding. Um, and that was I mean, it's hard to say why, because it's not only one reason. There was sort of a climate to um, support German filmmakers, also in the film funding rules. And there was the problem that many productions where he could in the end get funding were um, production that were um, supported by the TV stations. And um, there were great um, TV commissioners in, at the time, TV editors who were um, really supportive and um, saw really um, the art in his films. Um, but it was still hard because um, in television is not cinema, as we know. Television archives are not cinema archives. So the whole process of caring for a legacy in a way and caring um, for film material, caring um, for... Yeah, giving an, an access to the film material um, was never done with the Sales works and the whole body of works. So that was one major thing why we maybe not know him anymore. And when it comes, when, because you're talking about um, like the characteristics of his films, like when we come to that point, I mean, at first it's, um, it's, it's it could be, you could say it's there is a relation from the aesthetics of cinema um, to, of course, um, the, the same time, the new German cinema. But I tend to not only compare him, I really like to, because you can always do that, of course. You see some inspiration of Bresson, for example. Um, there are many ideas coming when you see the Salès aesthetics. But I really tend to see his works on his own because we haven't done that for such a long time. So you see an aesthetic that is working um, very directly with the human issues in society. It's a very, yeah, um, a way to um, stress certain um, dysfunctional um, um, that was a bit loud. That was the arsenal. <laughs> was the arsenal. So uh, dysfunctional habits in society, a lack of um, memory culture, a lack of reflecting the own history, the own German history, especially. And um, he's bringing that into the film through aesthetics, but also through um, um, characters that are at the borders of society that are overlooked in daily life. 
like children, like um, um, migrated people. Yeah. Well, uh, before we uh, continue talking about your work with the archive, how did you discover his cinema? What was your first experience of Salis? Uh, my first experience with Salas um, was um, regarding um, the preparations for a retrospective in the um, German Historical Museum, the Zeughaus Kino Berlin. And um, so we did a lot of research on Salas because our aim was to build up a retrospective of his works. This was in 2016. And after I think I think one year, one and a half years, we really, I mean, I could really try to um, find the material to have enough for retrospective. It was re it's really hard because of different licensing issues, um, different right holders, and of course TV stations that have a very complicated structure when it comes to giving access to the archival materials. And of course the issue that you already mentioned, the quality of the materials. And as we all, as we are film historians, we like, of course, to screen 16 and 35 millimeter copies. And um, it was, um, it's quite hard to have that also when it comes to the TV station um, archive system. So your first encounter of it was kind of, you were already involved in sort of uh, his legacy. How does that progress into the archive? That, uh, how, how, what, what's the genesis of this project? Yeah, it's really, it was sort of a journey because for me, curating um, always means, I mean, I, I never have, the, I never come to my curating projects with ideas that are ready. I mean, it's always a progress. It's a work in progress, so to say, because throughout screenings, you really come closer to a filmmaker. So I have to say that the initial point after the retrospective was that we, um, that I traveled with the films to, um, Tehran to, um, my colleague Riza Haeri, whose work as a curator I really admire. And, um, we always try to also, um, support the films. Um, like a, a, from a transnational Iranian German perspective. So, um, he tried to set up this uh, film series there in the Cinematic in um, the Park Elole in um, Tehran. And we were there. And, um, I will never forget the day I walked down to go to the first screening of the day. And, um, I mean, from Berlin, I know that maybe. Uh, yeah, 50 people are in the, in the cinema and that's, that's a good day. Yeah. Um, and there were like two screenings a day with 400 people in each screening. Wow. And it was just overwhelming to see how different also when it comes to film history, the idea of remembering artists and filmmakers and films is because they have Mm, sort of an, an oral history, a lively oral history, so to say, when they talk about um, um, people of the past, they don't forget, they really care. And caring means not only I care, it means to share what you care. And they really do that. And so I, I had many, many talks. And afterwards, I traveled to um, talks, and with talks, I mean, exchange with people that told me all, oh, about their experiences with Salas and I was at the film museum to see how the museum in Tehran covers his work and I was going then up to Bandare Turkaman um, at the Caspian Sea where Salas shot his uh, first two movies Still Life and A Simple Event following up if I could find um, some heritage of the architecture there uh, where some scenes were shot in still life, for example, when the old man comes uh, from the village back to the very, very, um, no, actually back from the countryside to the small village. And it was fascinating to um, really understand the atmosphere of these um, yeah, places that Salas had visited in a different time, of course, but to understand and to see 
um, so to say, um, what he saw in there and how much the countryside there tells us about the people living there, how much they are connected to each other. And afterwards, the films traveled to, um, for example, Brussels and um, London, and we had film series there, um, always with support by Goethe Institute, which was great because it did also something to um, um, film education in a way to change the um, film historical canon um, that it is it, that it itself to expand is, it yeah to expand it because I mean maybe not even to expand it but maybe also sometimes to destroy it because um, th I think there should be a new initiative when we're talking about film canon what we mean um, and because this is something really static right so it's something um, that shouldn't be static when we talk about film heritage it should be lively because it's a process where we in our days now still explore films yeah. so where how can people reach these films so um these are questions that i always have in my mind speaking of canon yes uh, I, I think that's kind of a big part of doing you know any any work within preservation restoration historians with the works that film historians do you know to add a fluidity to this concept of canon that maybe was a bit stale and this is kind of you know while you're telling me that these films are traveling again I, I take it that these films are traveling for the first time in a long time to these places, right? Is it maybe also for the first time ever that they're traveling there? I mean, do you see that like this continuing and maybe expanding to places where perhaps these films hadn't been screened before? Yeah, I think you can definitely um, say that. I mean, what I was just um, referring to was in 2017, 18. Yeah. So, and after that, I mean, we came up with a film series. They were traveling, like you said, for the first time ever um, in that um, size, so to say, and in the, with that body of works. But then I was still um, in 2019, 20 on that point to think what happened what happens now so i was always searching for a long lasting um idea um how to do what to do with it now i mean i didn't want it to become an event i, I wanted to like it's again this fact of to care on of heritage what to um what do we need if we um if we want um, that people see the films again and we of, and write about the films. And of course, what we need are the films in good quality and in a quality. I mean, I'm not a, the biggest fan of digital um, files, right? I mean, I really love a film material, but it's just not um, we just can't um, uh, cover the costs of uh, make um, analog restorations. So that's why I started uh, with digital re restorations and set up together with the support of Goethe Institute, the Shade uh, Salas Archive in 2020 and following up in 2021 um, with the first um, funding also from the FFR funding that supports the digital uh, film heritage uh, to fund the first um, uh, restorations. And by now, I mean, we have 2022, 2023 now, um, we have already restored four of his films. So you see it's an ongoing process and um, we're still working on it. And together with it, there will be a book published this year and it will be a book because I'm always thinking of um, if we have the films first, the access to the um, to the artwork, and then you have um, the possibility to write and to talk about it again and to um, like also um, deliver it for film education, so to say, and um, give some ideas. And when talking about a transnational work, I mean, it was always important for me that not... I am the one writing the book, but that I invite many, many people to write the book. So it's a book, um, it's a compilation of texts, of authors, of poets, of um, curators, of people working in film archives, um, of critics, of film historians um, that share their thoughts after they could now rewatch the films in a different quality or watch films for the very first time. It's so to say revisiting the films of Sales 
And finally, after we have the access now, really stressing also um, new ideas and to um, yeah give inspiration what the films um, tell us today. Right. Yeah. That's that was that's an interesting one, and also a word that you mentioned a few times already: transnational. Uh, do you think that this is an approach that's that's uh, bringing a new kind of uh, way of thinking about uh, preservation, restoration, exhibition of works from the past? Because sometimes, you know, these filmmakers are from countries, cultures that just don't have that means. Yeah, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't say they don't have the means. I would rather say we sometimes also uh, don't see what is, for example, happening in Iranian film culture. I just realized a few weeks ago that there is a new um, Salas film school in Tehran. So it's uh, it's something you only know uh, when you have connections and when you really want to hear what other um, um, people tell you that are living in other countries, of course. And I think it's always important to question our very, very Western view on the things. And the word transnational that you asked for, um, I mean, it's a term very often used in these days, and I tend to um, only use it when I really mean it. It's important, I think, because it's not only, it, it doesn't only mean international, right? It's something else. But you sometimes need time and a few more sentences to explain. I mean, for me, um, when it also comes to a historical view on the term, it's like a histoire croisée. So it means the term trans means for me not only to combine um, the aesthetics of Iranian f films of the um, or of um, German film aesthetics from the new German cinema, for example, but it means also um, to really intertwine them and to see um, what happens when um, aesthetical ideas migrate. And of course, the, the second point is also a political one. Um, there are in these days many and since a few years um, many many more um, twisted biographies biographies that are no longer um, linear biographies that are non-linear that means um, people that are living in different um, circumstances throughout different society in different countries and and um, we need to think about um, where does film heritage belong, for example, from filmmakers that have a transnational background and so to say, therefore, a transnational oeuvre. So where is the right archive? And with when it comes to Sales, there was always this question, why should we say the German films only belong to the German archives? Why don't they also belong in the Iranian archives? And that's why our third point comes um, on this table, so to say, because um, I would like to build an, uh, with the Shahid Saleh's archive also a web archive that gives the possibility to structure materials and to tell people when they want to screen a Saleh's film where they can, can find experts and, um, um, and archival um, members that know where to find the materials. So I really want to build up a transnational web archive structure, so to say, online. Food for thought, certainly. And uh, it's been a fascinating conversation. Uh, we'll have to wrap it up now. But I, of course, you know, we're at the Berlinale and there will be a film screening here by Salis. Uh, can you tell me more about both the film and also the screening? Is it a restored copy or is it, uh, is it a, a, a copy in film? What's, what are the uh, features of the screening itself? Unfortunately, it's not a restoration. Um, the selection committee chose order. It's a film uh, by um, uh, Sales that was shot in 1980 in Frankfurt, uh, Frankfurt am Main. And um, it's a film, it's hard to tell in one sentence. Um, it's a film that follows the life or the daily life of um, um, like a middle-aged um, man um, living with his vi wife in a flat in Frankfurt and um, having troubles to 
get his way in society, like find his own way and life in society. Like he has no job anymore. He doesn't um, want to sort of um, adapt to a job that he does not feel. So he is um, losing, so to say, um, the connection to his own to the ideas that society or the ways society wants him to go. So he sort of searches actually for a connection to his soul, one could say, rather than to what society um, is expecting from him. And um, it's a film that is very much also dealing um, with a society that has a lack of humanity for people in a way. Yeah, it's a, it's a film that is also reminding people on um, the past of Germany and that questions really much our daily lives, our routines and the question, is it us um, that make the decisions in which structures we live or is it um, the society? It has been a fascinating conversation and I know that we've only scratched the surface, but hopefully this, uh, this little conversation of ours Uh, will get people interested in Sally's again. And of course, get people interested in your wonderful work with the archive and uh, keep an eye out for uh, for screenings that perhaps may, may be uh, taking place in whatever part of the world you're in. What's the best way to keep up with that, by the way? <laughs> yeah, um, there is the Scheid Sally's archive website. And um, there, we are also on Instagram where you can find and contact us. And um, of course, there will be many more screenings um, follow up. And Which, where and do you have any places set up already? Yeah, for example, um, there will be um, a very um, um, great curate, curated exhibition in Austria, for example, in the spring. And um, I don't even know if I can already mm -hmm. say, but we will be on. Uh, let's just say we will be in some festivals. I'm not pretty sure. I don't. This think part might or might not be cut. Yeah, <laughs> this program. <laughs> If you're listening to it, it was it. <laughs> No, I just wanted to say the name of the festival because I really adore it. But anyhow, there will be some festivals coming up where um, our first retro restoration, um, Far From Home, will be screened. And of course, it's nice because these are digital restorations, as we stressed. Um, it's nice that on Tuesday you can see here at Berlinale and on Monday, actually, so 20th and 21st of um, February, um, the, um, the film Order. I mean, it was shot on 35 millimeters but we will screen a 16 millimeter copy there again. You see, it's still a way. To, exactly. And it's still a way to go. And we will also definitely restore this copy. And um, we look always forward um, um, for exchange with people because we really like to have it. Um, yeah. Um, a project that is lively also in the progress and on the journey it has in the future. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for listening to this very special episode of the Showcast. And don't forget to check out more episodes of this series from the 2023 Berlin International Film Festival and the European Film Market. We've got some really great podcasts out there for you to sink your ears into. Till the next time, this is Matt Mikuchi signing off. See you soon. Music